a targeting call. They went and reviewed it, and then they said it was no foul on the play, which, by the way, I agree with. I don't like making a big call like targeting. That's a technicality at the end of a very important game to extend the game. So my question to you, Sammy, when is it okay to ignore a call or calls in general in sports? Well, first and foremost, you know I have to mention it, is one, that it's not targeting. Okay, so I, I, I've done some more, you know, visual re, visual research on it and looked it up. <laughs> if anything, I've uh, I've done more. Uh, what's it called? I've done more searching of pictures of it, and he hit him a little bit, and by a little bit I mean a little bit. He hit him a little bit in the like back, almost back neck. Didn't touch his helmet. So to me, it's not targeting. That's the first. And Remember, like, targeting does not have to touch a helmet. It means you go. You're leading with your helmet. That's what it means. Yeah, but he targeting. didn't either lead with his helmet. The guy bent over, so his helmet happened to hit him. Sort of. He was leading with his shoulders. In, and first of all, it's not physically possible to not lead with your helmet if you're tackling. I know that sounds, it actually makes, I know that they have the rules, but like physically possible, the way physics work, you can't lean forward for a tackle without your head going forward as well. So it's kind of a weird way to explain the rule. Um, but I, like I said, even if it was slight targeting, I'm glad they did not call it because. Agreed, by the way. It's, it was like, it would have been like a technicality. Yeah. You know, if the guy actually fucking like, led with his head and like speared him in the back of the head. Um, I don't care what point at the game is. You, you call it right. I think the biggest thing here is like you said, when do you call it? I think you only call it at those points of the game. You only call it if it's egregious, egregious to the point where like, if I don't call this, I'm botching one of the most obvious calls in the history of sports. Right. Uh, for example, and I, I don't know if this is why they didn't call it. We all remember the Rams Saints, uh, for, um, what's it called playoff game, right? Right. The blatant pass interference. Now, I don't know if the refs just didn't see it or the refs subconsciously, you know how it works, were thinking, like, God, at this point in the game, do I call a pass interference? Do I call a pass interference? That was a moment where you do because it was so, so obvious. obvious. Yeah. But if yeah. it wasn't so obvious, I understand when a ref doesn't call it. Like, you don't want to change the game off a of, technicality i guess i mean yeah i guess i mean here's my thing there's certain stuff you don't call right like in baseball um there was a, i was at galarraga had the perfect game that the umpire called them safe on a bang bang play at first base with two outs in the ninth inning like that's yeah. a situation you, you just call the guy out yeah, you call <laughs> him out at that time yeah just call him out um look if a guy is i'm trying to think basketball wise if it's a Guys running, you don't call a moving pick on a game-winning basket, <laughs> right? No. Well, unless it's blatant, bro. Unless like it's, it's, like, so big. I'm talking about, like, a 50-50 call. Like, like barely, he might be moving. He might have leaned his shoulder a little bit. Like, you probably let it go. I, I think, I don't, I, see, I don't know about that one. That one, if it's, if it's impacting the play. Like, for example, that. If it was called spearing, it didn't change the play. It was at the end of a play, like his head might have hit his head. That's completely different than he did something like jumped off sides that they didn't call because it's such a close game and you're actually changing the impact. That's where I think it gets interesting, right? Like if somebody steps out of bounds, they step out of bounds. If they have a moving screen, they have a moving screen. If it's a pass interference, call it pass interference. But a targeting in that type of situation would be like, we're talking about a post play. It's it's like 50, it's it'd be call. like it'd be like if you make a stop on defense, you're up one, you're up one, make a stop on defense at the end of a basketball game, and then you like clapped in his face or something. They call a technical foul and that's tied the game. Correct. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, like that, those are times like, you just don't let it. You let people have an egregious celebration or let somebody do some say something stupid to the ref's face at the end of a game. For, that's right. Like or right. you're bitching at a ref with one second left in the NBA finals. And you're bitching at the ref while the other teams at the free throw line, they tee you up and then they win the game because they get free free throws. Like, that'd be bullshit, right? That's the yeah. point where you say, I'm a ref. I got to keep myself level headed and not call the whistle. I guess, I guess Michigan's been screwed on two, t two times now, right? I mean, they had this one where they got the uh, spearing call and then they had uh, Chris Weber calls a timeout, no timeouts left, and gets a technical foul to lose the national championship. So, uh, a lot of technicality. This is completely different, but sure. No, but but you have but to they, call that, right? Like you have to give them the technical for that. Yes, but you just the way you framed that whole thing made no sense because you said two times. It oh, 
Oh, I lost you there for a second. Yeah, yeah, I lost you too for uh, a second. All right, yeah. Might not have even been targeting against TCU, so it's like correct. No, no, I, like I the totally. Chris thing, they were out of fucking timeouts. Like, yeah, so I'm, I'm just saying, like two times they've like kind of had a weird situation at the end of the yeah. game. 